So today we're going to talk about having the divine mind which becomes our life filter. Ito po ang ating carrier verses mula sa 1 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, verse 6 to 16 NLT version. Ito po ay si Apostle Paul writing down his epistle, his letter to the Church of Corinth. Sabi niya po dito, Yet when I am among mature believers, I do speak with words of wisdom, but not the kind of wisdom that belongs to this world or to the rulers of this world who are soon forgotten. No, the wisdom we speak of is the mystery of God, His plan that was previously hidden. Even though He made it for our ultimate glory before the world began, but the rulers of this world have not understood it. If they had, they would not have crucified our glory stored. That is why what the scriptures mean when they say, and no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. But it was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit. For his spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. And we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit, so we can know the wonderful things that God has freely given us. When we tell you these things, we do not use words that come from human wisdom. Instead, we speak words given to us by the Spirit, using the Spirit's words to explain spiritual truths. But people who aren't spiritual can't receive these truths from God's Spirit. It all sounds foolish to them, and they can't understand it. For only those who are spiritual can understand what the Spirit means. Those who are spiritual can evaluate all things, but they themselves cannot be evaluated by others. For who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to teach Him? But we understand these things, for we have the mind of Christ. Let's pause for a while and open in prayer. Panginoon, kayo po ang bumisita sa lahat po ng nanonood, Panginoon, ng uh, Sunday service ng SNJ today. Whether they are joining us live or on demand, we pray, Panginoon, that you will bless them with your presence. Dalangin po namin, Panginoon, na lukuban niyo po sila ng banal na dugo ni Kristo. Palibutan niyo po sila ng maka, makapangyarihan niyo, Anghel. At huwag niyo pong hayaan na manakaw, Panginoon, ang katotohanan na kanilang matutunan sa araw na to. Bigyan niyo po kami, Panginoon, ng talino, pag-aalala, Panginoon, sa iyong sal- Ang grasya na masunod namin ng lahat ng aming natanggap sa iyo, Panginoon, sa araw na ito. At hiling namin, Panginoon, baguhin niyo po ang aming buhay habang nararanasan namin, Panginoon, ang iyong pag-ibig, pagbabago at pamumuno sa amin. At hayaan niyo, Panginoon, na kami, Lord God, ay maging matapang din na may pamahagi namin ang kapakinabangan namin sa iyong salita sa araw na ito. Ito po ang dalangin namin sa ngalan ni Jesus. Amen. So today we're going to talk about having the divine mind which becomes our life filter. So maganda po kasi na may filter tayo sa ating buhay so that we may make decisions na suabe, maayos at hindi na apektuhan negatively ang ating sarili at yung mga tao sa ating kapaligiran. So wag po natin nakalimutan when we use the filter that comes from God para ma-apply natin sa buhay natin, it begins in the mind. Yan, sabi mo sa katabi mo kung meron ka tagabi, sa katabi, It begins in the mind. Sa utak, sa isip, nagsisimula ang lahat. And number two, it ends with changed lives. So dahil po ginamit natin ang filter ng Panginoon through His divine mind, His divine truths, marami pong mga tao ang magbabago ang buhay because we are able to affect their lives through the power of God. Remember, ang, nag, ang nagbibigay po ng pagbago sa atin ay ang Diyos. Kami pong mga tao ay magdadala ng mensahe sa inyo. We will provide you with the gospel. We will provide you with spiritual divine truths and divine commands sa pwede niyo pong sundin para maging maganda po ang ating uh, buhay. Ngunit ang Panginoon ang dahilan ng pagbabago kapag hinayaan natin siya na pumasok at maghari sa ating buhay. So, it starts with uh, the mind or in the mind. So, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 to 9, NLT version. I hope na basahin niyo po ito habang kayo ay nakamute. At kung maaari po kayong tumayo, uh, as a practice of holy reverence, pag appropriate po, pag okay lang, uh, pwede niyo pong gawin together with me. Sabi po dito, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. 
Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with you. So ano raw ang dapat natin nilalagay sa ating isipan as a filter ng ating isipan, whatever is true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, and worthy of praise or praiseworthy. Isipin na lang po natin kapag ang filter natin ay itong mga bagay na to. Kung meron tayo let's say nabasa na balita o napanood na balita, ang filter kagad natin, totoo ba to? God can provide you with the truth. Meron lumapit sa'yo para mga ipagkaibigan. Pwede mong gamitin ang life filter na to to ask God, ito bang lumapit sa akin na to, maganda ba ang kanyang motibo? Totoo ba na siya ay aking magiging kaibigan? Totoo ba na siya ay aking magiging katuwang? So nakikita po natin dito na ang kapangyarihan ng Panginoon ay nasa mga tao na nagpapasakop sa Kanya, na tumanggap sa Kanya bilang Diyos at tagapagligtas. That is why every born again believer na tumanggap sa Kanya as Lord and Savior will have access to the mind of Christ. And the mind of Christ will provide you with the ability to filter everything. Yung mga natatanggap natin, at yung mga lumalabas sa atin, yung mga sinasabi natin, mga bagay, through this filter. Imagine if everything that comes out of our mouth ay honorable. Di po ba di tayo makakasakit ng damdamin? At kung ano hasabihin natin na honorable, syempre, makatotohanan to, they are truthful. What happens is, when I say hindi tayo makakasakit, makakasakit ng damdamin, I'm saying that we will not speak negative things that will cause trauma. Doon sa mga tao natin, it has been proven by uh, psychological study and by behavioral scientists na ang pinaka-piercing uh, trauma na maari mangyari sa isang relationship ay not really yung physical na violence kung hindi yung uh, mga words that actually disrupted yung emotional connection with the person that you are with. Parang yung... Magulang na hasabihan niya yung anak niya na napakatanga mo, napakabobo mo, wala ang pag-asa. Mas matindi ang latay nun hanggat pagtanda ng bata kasi rasa napalo mo sa puwet at panandalian na ramdaman ng bata yung, sak- yung sakit ng disiplina. So those are the things that are very, very important. So ano yung tama, yun ang napat na sa isipan natin, kung ano yung lalabas sa bibig natin, tama ba? Nasabihin ko to, di ba? Ano yung pure? Diba? Ano yung uh, napakaganda, ano yung admirable, ano yung excellent and worthy of praise. Now, we will break it down. Mag, mag, pupunta po tayo sa word study right now para maintindihan po natin ano nga ba ang Greek equivalent ng mga words na minention natin a while ago para mas maintindihan po natin ng mas malalim ano ba ang sinasabi ni Apostle Paul. Una yung true, true or truth. It comes from the Greek word alaitis which means unconcealed. Hindi sikreto. Pwede mong ipangalandahan. Kasi totoo siya. Hindi siya nakakaya, di ba? True in fact. So it's absolute. Hindi siya relative. Hindi yung depende doon sa mood ng tao nagiging totoo siya. O yung pagbabago ng kultura, it is absolute. It is uh, the truth that is timeless. Di po ba? Parang huwag kang papatay. That's a timeless truth. A timeless command by God. Worthy of credit, truthful, loving the truth, speaking the truth, and truthful. So, hindi lamang yung qualities ng katotohanan kung hindi ikaw mismo. You bega- begin to love the truth as your filter. So, walang kasinungalingan na lalabas sa iyong bibig. Hindi ka magpapanggap, hindi ka magsisinungaling. Doon sa mga mahal mo sa buhay. Pag nanood po tayo ng mga p- pelikula, makikita nyo normally yung family dynamic arc. Parating may kasinungalingan. Kung titignan po natin, so mga nanonood kayo ng Marvel movies, yung Thor, di ba? hindi alam ni Thor, tsaka ni Loki na meron pala silang kapatid na si Hela dahil sa pagsisinungaling ng kanilang magulang, si Odin San, di ba? So makikita natin normally na sinasabi ng mundo na okay lang magsinungaling para hindi mo masaktan yung mga tao sa kapaligiran mo. Pero pag ginamit natin ang filter ng Biblia, obviously, ang kasinungalingan ay lalabas at lalabas at ito ay makakaapekto dun sa dynamics ng relationship na because saying a lie is akin to betrayal. Kaya nga po kapag tayo ay nakipag-usap sa ating mga mahal sa buhay at kung meron tayong dapat aminin, meron tayong dapat sabihin na totoo, kahit masakit to, kailangan nating ilabas. Naalala ko po tuloy yung isang kaibigan namin na karoon kami ng conversation, nalaman niya na siya ay ampon. 
nung siya ay may edad na. At minasama niya to dahil nagsinungaling ang kanyang, uh, you know, yung parents that adopted uh, my friend. Ang nakaka- inis dito, yung mga kamag-anak, alam na ang punsya, especially yung mga nakatandang tito at tito niya, di ba? Pero siya hindi niya alam until such time na nagkaroon ng, you know, slip of the tongue, yung isang reunion nila, and then, na-discover niya na siya pala ay ampun. Kaya nga po kapag filter natin ang katotohanan ng Panginoon, mas suwabe ang ating interaksyon. Wala tayong sekreto, wala tayong kinakatakot na maaring biglang sumabog, biglang lumabas out of the blue na meron tayong kinonceal. That is why sinasabi po dito, ang Greek definition ng true or truth ay unconcealed. You don't need to keep it as a secret. Ang sarap kasing mabuhay nang wala kang pagpapanggap. Ang sarap mabuhay na malaya ka doon sa katotohanan na pinamumuhay mo, sinasabi mo, at iniisip mo. Hindi ka nagkakaroon ng agam-agam at takot na maaring may mangyaring kabukingan sa buhay mo. And that is something na napaka-importante as filter because God is a God of truth. Ang next po is honorable. Kung meron tayong iisipin, Let's think about honorable things. It comes from the Greek word semnos, which means reverend. Uh, meron tayong malalim na morality doon sa honorable na yan. Venerable, serious, di ba? grave, dignified. So, ibig sabihin, if we're going to say a promise, we honor that promise. We are reverential to that promise. In other words, tied down tayo sa promise na yon, And the only time that we will be released from that uh, promise is when we deliver the promise. Di ba? Marami akong kilala mga magulang, pangako ng pangako sa anak, o yung mga, yung mga magkarelasyon ng boyfriend and girlfriend. Ang daming pinapangako ni girl, ang daming pinapangako ni boy, and there's no honor if hindi siya ikikip. So if we're going to say something, let's make sure that we will honor what we promise and whatever we say, it brings honor to us and honor to the people involved. Ano pa yung next? It's right. Ano yung tama? Di po ba? Napaaganda na filter mo. Ano ba yung tama? Tama ba na gagawin mo to? Tama ba na sabihin mo to? Tama ba na bibilin mo to? It comes from the Greek word dikainos, which means just, especially just in the eyes of God, righteous, upright, righteous, virtuous, keeping the commands of God, approved uh, God, acceptable to God. And kung yun po yung pagbabasihan natin ng ating mga desisyon, yun po yung pagbabasihan ng ilalagay natin sa ating isipan, di hindi po tayo magkakasala. Hindi po tayo makakagawa ng mali. Actually, kung titignan natin, tama na sundin ng Panginoon dahil ito ay magbibigay sa iyo ng mas maayos na pamumuhay. Ngunit ang dikta ng mundo, suwayin ng Diyos, magkamal, magsinungaling, di ba? sakta ng kapwa, ngunit ang sinasabi ng Panginoon ng tama at ang may hustisya ay yung mga bagay-bagay na magbubuklod sa mga, mga pamilya. Kaya nga po nakikita natin ngayon, di ba? Uh, children against parents, parents against children, you know, spouses divorcing or yung mga live-in partners nagkakahiwala. You see blended families right now because before they entered into that relationship, hindi nila finilter ang kanilang decision if that is the right decision to make. Grabe po talaga ang Panginoon. If we will just listen to God and we will allow Jesus or the Lord Holy Spirit to change us, ito po yung magiging basihan ng mga desisyon natin. At syempre, hindi tayo madidiskaril. Diba? Hindi tayo makakasakit ng damdam namin. Next is pure. Comes from the Greek word hagnos, which means free from ceremonial defilement, holy, sacred. Ano pa? Paano siya ginagamit? In a condition prepared for worship. Pure, either ethically or ritually or ceremonially. Chaste, pure from carnality, modest, pure from every fault, immaculate. Ang ganda po, di po ba? Sa mga tao na nakatikim ng pure honey, uh, madali niyo ma-identify ang honey na diluted. Bakit ko sinasabi sa inyo to? Because yung, yung purity kasi, it is a decision that you make when you make it as part of the filter of your mind. So for instance, meron kang nakita ng situation na na witness mo siya, di ba? And there is malice doon sa approach ng isang kaibigan mo sa isang kaibigan mo. In other words, yung malice, let's say, for example, in in this context is gusto pagsamantalahan ng kaibigan mo, yung isang kaibigan mo. But now, the purity in you will say that is wrong. And you cannot stay out of that. 
and you have to address the situation. Rightly or wrongly, ang perspective ng mga tao sa'yo, it doesn't matter. What matters is, you are keeping purity doon sa relationship. Dahil ayaw mo magkabadripan sila. At ayaw mo na may gamitan doon sa mga kaibigan mo. Ang gusto mo, yung friendship ninyo ay naayo na walang fault. Diba? Na walang, uh, walang panggagamit o walang pang-iisa. And that is so beautiful, especially in the aspect of relationships. Lalo na yung mga hindi pa nag-aasawa, fornication, di ba? Uh, sa mga may asawa, adultery, yung mga hindi pa nag-aasawa, yung nagpiprimarital sex. Now, if you are going to have purity as foundation ng relationship ninyo, then imagine the beauty of that. Walang fear of betrayal. There is trust in the relationship. There is no guilt, of course. Para dun sa tao na ka-offend, di ba? There is forgiveness. At ang pinakamaganda dyan kasi is you can pass on the purity of your relationships doon sa magiging anak mo or the very least sa mga tao sa kapaligiran mo. Kaya nga po namamang ako sa isang uh, celebrity na vlogger sa Pilipinas who decided, you know, to involve yung kanyang faith at ang kanyang simbahan doon sa kanilang relationship. And that's absolutely amazing na inantay nila ang kanilang panahon ng marriage before they cons- consummated. Hindi ito pagiging uh, old-fashioned. It is just rightly practical. And you can see that the commitment grows stronger habang inaantay nila yung marriage because no one gave in. Because they were not able to do their carnal desires to have premarital sex. And that is absolutely Amazing. I hope ano, more uh, people will come into the realization na yun yung best possible course of action prior to that. So ano pa? Uh, filter mo is whatever is lovely. Comes from the Greek word prosthelis, uh, which means pleasing, agreeable, diba? acceptable, acceptable ka, grateful ka. You know, you have that, you know, whatever you say will be acceptable. When I say acceptable, I'm not saying na compromising yung ginagawa mo, decision mo, sinasabi mo. When I say acceptable, acceptable in the eyes of God that whatever you're doing, uh, na you have the risk of being persecuted, you will still still do it. Because at the end of it all, lovely yung ginawa mo, an expression of love sa tao. Sabi ko nga dun sa isang kaibigan ko, hindi baling magalit ka sa akin ngayon. Murahin mo ako pag nakatalikot ako na kailangan kong sabihin ng mga bagay na ito sa'yo dahil mahal kita, okay? And you reject it, I don't care. But at the end of the day, I know one day you will realize and come back and say, tama si John. Tama ikaw. Bilang kaibigan at salamat dahil mahal mo ko. Dahil yun ang totoong ta, uh, tanda or mark or uh, manifestation ng pagiging true friends. Next, admirable. You famous, which means uh, well-reported of, well-reported of, spoken in kindly in spirit, laudable, reputable. So ibig sabihin, maganda ang reputation mo. Walang maiba to sa yung masama. Diba? Ang pinakamasama mga sabi nila sa'yo, sobrang bait ng taong yan. Sobrang tuwid ng dila niyan. Sobrang puro ng utak niyan. Sobra yan magbigay ng kanyang payo ang ganda. Dahil hindi nila masabi ang mga bagay na masasama tungkol sa'yo kasi walang masama tungkol sa'yo. Diba? Yun yung masama sa'yo. Walang masama. At nakakainis kasi sa isang taong masama na wala siyang makita masama sa ibang tao na walang ginagawang masama. Kaya mas ginagawa nilang lumayo sa mga taong matuwid. Ngunit kung ikaw ay admirable, then you understand that whatever you make as a decision, diba, nagkakaroon ka ng reputasyon na pwede kang pagkatiwalaan. And going towards the latter portion, excellence, di ba? Uh, it comes from the Greek word arete, which means moral goodness, virtue, gracious act, virtue, uprightness, virtuous course of thought, feeling and action, virtue, moral goodness, any particular moral excellence. So, ibig sabihin nito, ethical ka kumilos. Kapag ikaw ay umaangat sa career ladder mo o may business ka, you do it ethically. Tama yung approach mo. Ang business ka, nagbabayad ka ng tax, tatrabaho ka para umangat ang iyong buhay, you are able to, you know, help others as you go on towards the uh, la- corporate ladder and wala kang minasama, wala kang inintriga, wala at sinira. 
And whatever you're, do, you're doing, you are doing it to the best of your ability to put in the time, the energy, the effort. Nagpupuyat ka kung kailangan, nag-aaral ka kung necessary. Marami kang kakausapin, marami kang, uh, ano, ano, you unify so that, you know, collaboratively it becomes real. And eventually, when the appreciation or the rewards comes in, you don't really mind who gets the credit. That's moral excellence. That is ethical behavior. Wala kang ingit. Diba? Wala kang motivation na kailangan may patunayan ka sa ibang tao tungkol doon sa pag-angat mo sa buhay. No. Moral excellence means you are secure sa sarili mo. You do not think ill of other people. And if you are going to compete, you compete with yourself. Kadoktong po kasi niya, excellent and praiseworthy. Huwag po natin kakalimutan. So it's connected with regards to the filter that you can actually place in your mind. Ano po ba ang praiseworthy? It comes from the Greek word epanos, which means commendation, praise, approval, approbation, and commendation. So, ibig sabihin, um, because you're doing this great thing, you know, uh, people will commend you for that. So, meron po ang share sa inyo na modified version ng quote from Mahatma Gandhi, which is very good. The modified version po yung nasa lower right ng inyong screen. Sabi dito, watch your thoughts for they become words. Watch your words for they become actions. Watch your actions for they become habits. Watch your habits for they become your character. Watch your character for it becomes your destiny. Everything starts in the mind. Kaya pag ang filter mo is Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 to 8, you will never go wrong. You will succeed. Yung gumawa po kasi ng poster na to, din, dinagtong niya lang po. What we think we become. And it's also written in the Bible for as a man think it, so is he. Now, if you use this filter, it ends with changed lives. It begins in the mind, but it ends with changed lives. Ang unang tao na mababago ay ikaw as you apply those filters sa isipan mo. So James chapter 3, verse 17 to 18, from the Amplified Version, sabi po rito, ah, from an NIV version muna, but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere, peacemakers who sow in peace, reap a harvest of righteousness. And may the Lord add a ton of revelation, loads of revelation sa binasa natin. It is absolutely amazing. I'm going to read that to you. Same verses uh, using the Amplified Version. But the wisdom from above is first pure, morally and spiritually undefiled. Then peace-loving, courteous, considerate, Gentle, reasonable, and willing to listen. Full of compassion and good fruits. It is unwavering without self-righteous hypocrisy and self-serving guile. And the seed whose fruit is righteousness, spiritual maturity, is sown in peace by those who make peace by actively encouraging goodwill between individuals. So, ang nangyayari po sa isang tao na applies the life filter sa Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 to 8, nagkakaroon siya na access to the divine mind of Christ by accessing divine wisdom. And that wisdom is not of the world. Kasi ang ibang wisdom ng world, may, may pagka-academic, may pagka-philosophy, may ideological, but the wisdom that comes from God, anong sabi niyan? First of all, it is pure. It is morally and spiritually undefiled. So wala kang masamang tinapay. Wala ang gagawin to advance yourself in a manner that will use other people, will you use circumstance, hindi mo kailangan mandugas, hindi mo kailangan manira. And then you experience peace. And then you sow peace and you reap righteousness. And when, when we say you reap righteousness because you become a peacemaker, yung mga relationships mo, Siyempre, may arguments pa rin yan, but it doesn't end in anger, hatred, and bitterness. Arguments will be listened, you know, differences in opinions will be brought to the table, but there will, will be uh, a compromise, an understanding, a common decision that can come out of it. Kasi the, the wisdom of the world says that whoever has the loudest voice and the most eloquent, you know, ability to speak out, usually wins, diba? Now, the wisdom that comes from God, it means that righteousness will prevail, not the loudest voice or the most eloquent stance or the, the ability to defend one's perspective or the ability to sway other people's perspective towards their own. 
ang pag-uusapan kung ano ang tama. That is why when you use that life filter, the first person who changes is you. The next uh, group of individuals who would change because of this process is your family. Is your family. So if you are a son or daughter, ikaw yung nauna na born again, then, you know, Jesus can make a miracle. Uh, I'm not saying na guaranteed to. What I'm saying is, there is a potential na sinabi ng Panginoon as a promise, you and your household will be safe if you continue on you know, this path. Now, if you're a parent, you can actually bring this to fruition, especially if you're a father. Joshua 24, 14 to 15, Amplified Version says, Now fear the Lord and serve Him in all faithfulness. Throw away the gods of uh, your ancestors worship beyond the Euphrates River and in, in, in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. So this truth actually dichotomizes. If you're not going to serve God, then you are ser serving Satan. Ganun na simple yan. Then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors serve beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. The next group of individuals who will end with changed lives will be your family. At ang sarap, syempre, kapag yung buong pamilya mo serves God. Because they're going to apply the filter ng Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. They're going to find that that wisdom that comes from heaven is pure. They have access to the mind of Christ. And they will be able to see yung sinasabi ng Panginoon sa nabasa natin kanina sa Corinthians that, you know, no I has seen, no ear has heard, but God has in store for those who love Him, who are called according to His purpose. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 2. That person will be able to access that one because he or she is able to connect to God in a very personal and powerful way. Hallelujah. And the last bit is, if you're a believer, the people who have not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior around you. Papano? 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11 to 12, the message version. First, mamaya basahin ang amplified version. Sabi dito, friends, this world is not your home, so don't make yourselves cozy in it. Don't indulge your ego at the expense of your soul. Live an exemplary life in your neighborhood so that your actions will refute their prejudices. Then they will be won over to God's side and be there to join in the celebration when He arrives. Amplified version. Beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers in this world to abstain from sensual urges. Those dishonorable desires that wage war against the soul keep your behavior excellent among the unsaved Gentiles. Conduct yourself honorably with graciousness and integrity so that for whatever reason they may slander you as evildoers. Yet by observing your good deeds, they may, they may instead come to glorify God. In the day of visitation, when he looks upon them with mercy. And may the Lord just add, you know, anointing the red the reading of His mighty word. Ang ganda po kapag ang buhay natin, we access uh, what is available through Christ. What is available through the Holy Spirit. What happens is, ng pag-iisip natin ay nagiging malinis. Hindi lang siya isang beses, kung hindi permanently change. Unless of course, na gusto natin dumihan ulit ang ating isipan. Ngunit, pag nabago ka, imposible na hindi mo mabibitbit ang pamilya mo. Pero yung pagbabago mo kasi, it has to be permanent. It has to be really submitted to God. And when that happens, your family will be next. And then, of course, as you widen your net, even strangers will come to the saving grace of God. And that is absolutely amazing, mga kapatid, mga kaibigan. And that is where God wants you to realize Ano nga ba yung pinakamagandang maaring mangyari sa ating lahat? And this is where God wants us to reside. This is where God wants us to live in this lifetime. So, let's bow down our heads and close our eyes. Kung hindi pa po natin natatanggap si Jesus bilang Diyos sa tagapagligtas, ito po ang pinakamagandang pagkakataon. Now, I would like to encourage you to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior today. Hallelujah. As your heads are bowed, eyes are closed, ang unang step po na gagawin nyo is to ask God for forgiveness. 
tawarin tayo sa ating mga kasalanan. The Bible is very clear. Sabi niya, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yan ang pangako ng Panginoon. Absolutely amazing. Step number two is we you thank Jesus Christ. Dahil siya ang the way, the truth, and the life. He is our um, Lord. He is our Savior. He died on the cross so that we may have life to the fullest here on this planet and access to paradise when we die. Amen. Step number three, the most important step of all, please repeat after me. Ulitin mo tong prayer na to. Hayaan mo na ang prayer na to ay prayer mo. Ako ay mo as yours. At sabihin mo from your heart. Repeat after me. Jesus, nais ko po na malinis ang aking isipan. Kayo po ang maghari sa aking isipan. Sa aking puso. Sa aking buhay. Nais ko po na ikaw ay maging Diyos at tagapagligtas ko. Bigyan niyo po ako ng karunungan mula sa lang. At tulungan niyo po ako na mabago ang aking buhay. Dahil alam ko po, hindi ito mangyayari kung wala ka. Amen. Now you can, uh, you know, open your eyes right now. Kung ikaw ay nanalangin mula sa puso mo, ikaw ay ligtas na. Pag namatay ka, physically, ang kaluluwa mo ay pupunta sa langit. Pero higit dyan, habang ikaw ay buhay sa mundong ito, marami kang magagawa para ikaw ay magkaroon ng reward sa langit. You can store up for yourself treasures in heaven. And while you are here on this planet, you can apply the filters and live the most excellent life ever. Sa mga kapwa ko, Kristiano, nais ko po kayong ipanalangin sa oras at pagkakataon na ito. Kung naisuko na natin ang ating isipan sa mundo, ito ang araw at pagkakataon na pwede natin bawiin ito. Kung wala na tayong filter sa ating isipan na biblical, katulad ng Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 to 8, hinahayaan natin na mapuno ng kung ano-anong negatibong mga bagay ang ating isipan, maaari tayong humingi ng saklolo sa ating Diyos at tagapagligtas na si Jesus. Nais tayong humingi, na, nais, na, uh, naisin natin na humingi ng pagpapagaling sa Kanya. You know, you can receive healing and deliverance today, yes. Oh, hallelujah, you can. You can. Just open up your heart and mind. Come to the Lord today. At hilingin mo, Lord, heal my mind. Correct my decisions. If needed, teach me to forgive or seek forgiveness. Hayaan nyo na maisuko ko ang aking buhay sa iyo. Hiling mo ng, ng tulong sa Panginoon na malagpasan mo ang mga kasalanan na gagawa mo o patuloy mong ginagawa. At hayaan mo na ikaw ay magpasakop lamang sa Kanya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kung nais mong maging malaya, nais mong mabago, nais mong... Uh, makapagpasakop sa Panginoon at maunawaan na you have access to the divine wisdom, the divine mind of Christ, and you would like to remind yourself of the filter sa iyong mind ng Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 to 8. Ma-apply mo to sa buhay mo so that you will be changed from glory to glory each day. Kung nasaan ka man ngayon, I would like you to lift up your right hand. Taas mo ang kanang kamay mo as a sign of surrender sa Lord. In a sign that you would like to be healed and delivered. Huwag mong pansinin kung meron kang katabi, hayaan mo na ito ay between you and God and you and God alone. Hahawakan ng Panginoon ang iyong kamay. Itataas ka niya, itatayo ka niya at sasabihin niya sa iyo, You are forgiven. You are healed. You are delivered. Come and eat with me. On the banquet table, I have prepared for you. Hallelujah. Now you can believe that 
and you can live it. You can breathe it. You can speak it. You can confess it. That God will never go back against His promise. And that you can be healed according to your faith right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take your victory. Receive your healing and your blessing today. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs>